afternoon, Church. I would like to extend a warm welcome to our regular church members and to our online viewers. Thank you for joining our worship service today at Bilston. We are delighted to have you and we look forward to have you with us every week. Our, church, our series of meeting for this month will focus on, on the family. These meetings are geared towards family with young children and youth. Our church leadership recognized that many parents today are struggling to understand their children in terms of the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual needs. For those reasons, this series of meetings are intended to open up a meaningful dialogue within the family where understanding, acceptance, and listening to each other's needs can be cultivated and nurtured. And at this time, I'm going to introduce our speaker. Our speaker is Sister Rosie Rao. Sister Rosie Rao is a qualified advanced nurse practitioner. She has three beautiful children and a handsome husband, Pastor Mohan Rao. She's a very understanding and down to earth person. She's always laughing and making others laugh. She's a spiritual person who loves the Lord. She will be blessing us with the message from God entitled understanding and accepting each members of the family. Before she speaks to us, we will be uh, listening to a special number Sorry, we will be having a prayer by Brother Clarence Crossdale. After that, we will be having a special number from our little Rosanna, then followed by Sister Rosie's message. Can we adopt a position of reverence as we seek the Lord in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we come before your presence today in honor and um, to glorify your name in many different ways and in your many different names. Because of your love towards us, Lord, and your unfailing goodness, despite things that we do that um, are undeserving, we are grateful for you for loving us and for showing us mercy lord your kingdom come in every heart every day this day in every nation and in every part of the world your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and however hard it is sometimes we try to um block block you out of um our lives, we ask you to show us glimpses of your goodness as we hear bad news, Lord, and headlines that um, take place um, throughout the world. We know, Lord, that you are um, the good one and you are your representative of goodness. So show us glimpses of your mercy and your goodness, Lord, that we can be inspired. We ask you to give us today our daily bread and um, grace us as um, you need us, um, as, as we need it. We ask you to forgive us of our sins, Lord. There are times when we are um, dismissive of your callings, but we ask you to forgive us as you promised of our sins and other wrongdoings. We ask you to lead us um, not into temptation and help us not to lose hope. We ask you to deliver us from evil, Lord, from fear, from violence, from prejudices, from injustices. Um, even sometimes we need to be delivered from ourselves. We ask you, Lord, to deliver us. Lord, we um, thank you for your Sabbath day. This is your day and this special day, a day we can spend in peace and in harmony one with another. We ask you to give us peace today, the peace that passes all understanding. And Lord, um, may you um, 
bless the one who is about to um, grace us with your message today, that our ears or eyes may be opened and we will be blessed. Lord, we ask you to um, help us in our relationships. Help us um, that um, we may love one another as you have loved us, Lord. We ask that um, we will listen to your voice. And Lord, there are so many other things that we would um, like to acknowledge, to give you thanks for, to plead, to ask for petitions and to pray. We pray for the sick, Lord, and we pray for the troubled ones. We pray for the church, and as we look forward to opening our churches, Again, Lord, we ask you to lead, guide, and direct us that um, everything will be done in order, in spirit, and in truth. Lord, in your mercy, we ask you to hear our prayer this morning. Amen. Amen. You are the word at the beginning. Yeah. 
good, good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to be doing the uh, scripture reading. The scripture reading today is going to come from Proverbs 24, 3 to 4. And it says, through wisdom, our house is built and by understanding is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. 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 I want to thank God for uh, giving me this opportunity to speak with uh, all of you. Um, and I also want to thank um, Dr. Herbert. Um, he spoke to me and uh, I think we had two conversations and it was almost like we know, knew each other for a long time. <laughs> he may, yeah, he, uh, and really want to thank Dr. Herbert, the pastor of the church. And also I want to thank Sister Marla and my cousin Sunita and Solomon, who actually thought of me when, when uh, you had to think of whom to speak on this particular day. So I really want to thank all of you. And I also want to thank uh, my little girl, Rosanna, um, for that lovely, beautiful song. Uh, we were not sure, uh, but she's a, like an ever-ready battery. Whenever you ask her to sing, she's there. She's happy to do that. And uh, I really want to thank God uh, that, for that lovely song. I also want to thank uh, Chinu for the, for the scripture reading. All in the last minute, but they all did it. I want to thank for this one. Uh, the topic that is given to me today is about understanding every member of a family. Uh, mine will be more like a presentation. It will be nice if you all can take a paper and a pen. I will give you so many points, you probably might want to write down. Is that okay? Okay. So before we could start, can we, uh, can we just bow down our heads and pray again, please. Yeah. Our most gracious and loving and living Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for giving us this time to call upon your holy name. Father, it's an important hour where we need to learn about the important unit that you have created, that is our family. Lord, as we learn about understanding our members of the family, I, I want to invite your presence here. Let every words of my mouth come from your presence. Please fill me and everyone who's listening here with your Holy Spirit. We need your guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My first question is, as I said, it's going to be more like a presentation, uh, which probably is going to be like, I probably would li like you all to answer if uh, possible. Uh, my first question is, what is a family? What is a family? Anybody wants to answer? Well, let me give you the dictionary definition. The dictionary definition of a family is, it is a family is defined as a specific group of people that may be made up of partners, children, parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, and grandparents. But the definition that is very simple for us to understand is, it is a group of one or more parents and their children living together as a unit. I'm pretty sure all of you who are here belong to a family or represent a family. Am I right in saying so? Yes. Yeah. My next question is, when was this institution of family created? Or when was the family first created? Anybody can answer? The Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden. Thank you very much. Yes. It is one of the oldest institution in the world. Do you agree with me? It is one of the oldest institution in the world, which means it is older than the church. Yeah, the church was only created in 42 AD. So, uh, so it was created after the death of Jesus Christ. So the family, the institution of family is older than the church. Well, it is also older than your government. Am I right? So think for yourself, yeah. Who can touch? Can you? Can the can the government touch your family? 
it was created way and long before the government was created. Family definitely pre-existed the government. It is one of the oldest institutions in the world, as you have, a sister has correctly said, it was created when the world was created. So it is as ancient as the world. My third question is, why is the family so important to God's program in the kingdom of God? Why is the family so important to God's program in the kingdom of God? Okay. Anybody who has any answer? It's not sermon, it's a presentation, so you can participate. <laughs> okay, fine. As we all know, the family is the smallest and the most important unit in a society. Do you agree with me? A society is made up of so many small, so many families. Yeah, so many families together make up a society. And of course, so many societies make up the whole world. The whole world, when you come down to this, the final part of the whole world is what? A family. So is it an important aspect? It's a very important unit. Yeah, because it is God's ideal institution. Is God's ultimate solution for human issues. Do you, do you understand that? Any problem, it is the family which is a cure for all social life, so social ills, whether it is psychological, whether it is emotional, whether it is spiritual, or whether there is social. If you have any problem in the family, in, so in, in, in your life, in, in all these aspects, if you have an ideal family, if you have a proper family, that's where you get your strength from. That's where you get your cure from. You understand? So that is why God says you can't just go and cry to anybody and everybody. Others may be fine. And, but ultimately, it is your parents, it is your mm -hmm. children who will be the one who will be able to take care of you. That is why God said a family is God's ideal institution. Because he said the family is supposed to heal all the problems that your family members are going through. Therefore, if a government wants a healthy society, what do they need to do? They actually need to concentrate on restoring the unit, the family unit. But unfortunately, things are going in the wrong direction. But as a family unit, we need to understand the purpose and the power of a family. Please note this down. We need to understand there are two components here, the purpose and the power of a family. It has a purpose and also it has power, the power which many people have not recognized. You go out and look for the power, but the power is where? Within your family. But God believes that this is the most important unit as he wants to use the power of a family to influence each other in the family and when you influence each other you produce good people who actually influence the society hope you're with me so that is why it is so important to have a good family a good family in our life my next question is what is the most important components to build a successful family Chinu read the uh, scripture reading. He's just right with me here. Yeah. So he read the scripture reading. The important competence of building a family is just right there in that Bible verse. Okay. The Bible was Proverbs 20, 24 verses 3 to 4. Okay. That I'm going to say something. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if I'm going to say a family will not be successful just with love. Do you agree with me? You probably may or may not, but a family will not be successful just with love alone. One preacher or one marriage counselor, he said most of the time when the couple came to his office, they were so upset and they want to get divorced. And so they come to his office and they come and take the chairs there. And to every couple, he asked this one question. So he looks at the lady and he asks the lady, lady, do you love him? And you know what she says? Yes, I do love him. And why do you want to divorce him? Because he's a beast. So I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to live with him. And she, he turns to the 
to the, uh, to the man and he asks, do you love her? Yes, I do love her. That's what he says. But why do you want to get divorced? The woman is crazy. You understand what I mean? So that's what they say. So from this, so this is what he says with his experience. Almost to every couple, he asks this question and every single person there says that they love each other. It's like a schizophrenic situation here. They all say that they love each other, but they don't, but they all are ready to get divorced. They don't want to stay together. So what is there? So what is lacking there? So what does it tell me? It tells me that love alone is not adequate to keep a marriage together. The three basic components is not love. It goes beyond love and beyond sex because that's what people think. Love and sex can keep them together, but unfortunately that's not going to keep you together. Solomon says in this beautiful verse, in Proverbs chapter 24 verses three, to three and four, it says, Three important things. The first thing you need to build and build your a successful form is knowledge. Yeah, you need to have knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is information. Knowledge is information. You need to have the information about the other person, information about the other ones, the other people in your family. You need to know the original information, the truth. Okay. Number two. He then says, he, he, you need to have understanding. What is understanding? Understanding means it's not the information, it is comprehension. What is understanding? It is comprehension. You can sit in the class or you can sit here for the next one hour and listen to whatever I'm saying today, but you probably will not, if you don't really understand, have you learned anything at all? Have you learned anything at all? You probably haven't learned anything. So what I'm giving you is information. But if you don't comprehend, unfortunately, what happens? You have just remained in the first level. You have not gone to the second level of understanding. Your information or your knowledge is useless if you don't comprehend, if you don't understand. Once you understand, then you go to the next level, which the proverb says, that is wisdom. Yeah, what is wisdom? Wisdom is nothing but it is the application of the information, application of your understanding. You understand what I mean? So what you understand, when you understand what is happening around in your family, you understand each other in your family, then what happens? You, you apply that in your life. So you, you, what, what I mean by applying in life, you know your husband doesn't like certain things. You know your wife, if she does something, something that's going to upset her. So, do you do it against that? So do you want argument? You want, so you understand things and then you apply them. You say, no, this is not the appropriate time for me to speak to my husband. It is okay. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell him what he's doing is probably is not acceptable to me. However, this is not the time for me to speak to him. I apply my understanding. So I know where to tell when, you understand? So that is wisdom, okay? The Bible says, your family can be successful if you have these three components. Yeah. So knowledge, information, that is information, understanding, and third one is what? Wisdom. So if you have a strong home, strong family, then don't go after love and sex, but go after information, understanding, and wisdom. That's what will, is going to build your family. However, our main topic today is understanding each and every member of the family. As requested by our, your church elders, my main focus today is going to be understanding children and parents. That's what he asked us to do. So that's what it's going to be today. All right. So I'm going to say something to you. Did you know that insanity is hereditary? Do you know that? We get it from our children. Am I right? Yes, we do get it from our children sometimes. <laughs> okay. A science teacher was introducing her class to the subject, uh, to the, uh, introducing the subject of magnet and magnetic power to her children. So he, she wanted to uh, put, a, put forth a riddle. So this is what she said. I'm going to put forth the riddle and I want you to guess what subject I'm going to speak today. So she said, I start with M and I pick up things. What am I? That teenager immediately responded and said, mother. You understand what I mean? Yeah. 
So sometimes the teenagers say the definition of a man, uh, so a father is a man who carries a photograph in his wallet where his money used to be. Yeah. You know what, you know that, you know, you know that your children are growing up when they start asking you questions as to where they came from and they never say to you where they are going. You know that they're growing up. Yeah. I want to say something to the teenagers here. Okay. I know I have a teenager right in front of me who's listening to me. I know you, you say something, to, you know, you know, when you teenagers are very upset with the children, you people say sometimes that you are when you're upset with your parents. You say that sometimes. Yes, you do say it, not in front of us, probably to your friends. Remember, we also don't like you sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes when you come into the kitchen and if you heard a parents talking and suddenly when they see you, Stop talking. Do you know something? We probably must have talked about you. All right. So I must I will tell you that this thing goes two ways. It's not only one way, it goes two ways here. A mother has a teenage daughter who's very independent and she lives independently at her house. Yeah. She rem remember parents are people with feelings too. It's not only the teenagers, it's us. Also, as parents, we also have feelings. A father says to her teenage son or teenage daughter, when they go out, we say, remember to come back home by 11 p.m. So what does the child say? As a child, what do you say? I'm not a child anymore. Yeah, that's what do you say. I want to tell you, yes, the father says, it's exactly, you're not a child anymore. That's why I want you to be back by 11 o'clock. I know you children think that we are stupid, but we are not. Okay, just want to tell you as teenagers, I want to let you know, your brain is not completely matured until you are 21, 22 years old. That is a fact, that is a medical fact. That is why we parents are actually warning you, saying things to you, all right? Teenagers say, I, I can assure this because I've got teenagers in my house as well. Teenagers say, okay, I hate it when my parents say, when, when my parents repeat things so many times. Is that true? Yes. Shall I tell you something? Why would we repeat things if you would have heard it at the first time? If you would have listened to us in the first time, is there a need for us to repeat it again and again? It's just because you people are not listening to us, we have to sometimes repeat it again and again and again. When your parents say something to you, please acknowledge it and say, yes, yes, mom, yes, dad. If you don't acknowledge it, and if you look or stare at us just like that, do you know what we will do? We will assume that you have to probably taken something. You probably would assume something. And that's common because that's because we don't know what is happening to you. I want to say today, children, obey your parents in the Lord. And that is the right thing to do according to the scriptures. It is amazing how, how teenagers are very good at statistics. Have you noticed that? Yeah, anytime you say no to what they ask us to do, you know, what do you tell? Everyone else can do that. Everyone else are allowed to do that. Is that true? Yeah, that's what you think. But that will be probably by the survey of one other person. That's what that everyone means. Am I right? Yeah. Mark Twain said, when I was 14, my father was so ignorant that I could hardly bear, bear him. But by the time I was 21, I was amazed to see how much he had learned over the seven years. It seldom dawns on teenagers that when they grow old, they will know as little as their parents know. You know something? Jesus was the only teenager who knew more than his parents, yet he, he chose to obey his parents. You understand? Yet he chose to obey him. Bible says that he was obedient unto them. The best reason for you to honor your parents is because God tells you to do it. And also I'll tell you something, it is the recipe of blessing and prosperity, and long life. What does the fifth commandment say? What does the fifth commandment say? Honor your father and mother that your days will be long in the land that I give you. So, so if you were children, it is a duty for you to honor your parents. And also I would tell to parents, it is our duty to be honorable as well. So parents need to live a life of honor as well. But now I'm just going to give you a few practical points as to how you can honor your parents. You can write them down. 
how you can honor your parents. Number one, accept them as they are. Yeah, accept them as they are. Proverbs 23 verse 22 says, listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she's old. Number two, appreciate them. Have you any time appreciated your, appreciated your parents? Have you any time done that? I'm not only talking to young children here, I'm talking to adults as well here who got parents. Have you any time appreciated your parents? Yeah? Children, do you know something? It is hard, it is expensive, it is energy consuming for us to raise you up. It is not easy, it is very, very hard, but still we do everything for you. We wash your clothes, we cook your food, we do so many things. We drop you here, there, everywhere you need to do. We do all these things just because of one thing. That's because we love you. That's the only reason. So it is, it is important for you to appreciate them. Le do you know something? We can legally disown you. But we don't want to do that because we love you. Oh, so we still keep you all under our wings because of that one reason. So please, the second point to show that you honor your parents is learn to appreciate them. Number three, do not abandon them. Do not abandon them, especially when they grow old. Do not abandon them. Yeah, this is not only for the children. I'm talking to everybody here. Yeah, you might have to juggle your own responsibilities to meet their needs. I tell you, this is a character thing. For a young woman, okay, for a young woman who is here, who's dating somebody or who's planning to get married, I would say, if you want to be sure that your man whom you're dating or who, whom you want to marry, if you want to be sure that he will care for you, the way to care for you is to check how he is caring for his father and his mother, especially his mother and father. If he's taking care of them well, you can be rest assured that he will take care of you well. And I know, I noticed this in my husband from the time I fell in love. He always never, he always took priority. He always made sure that his mother is taken care of very well. From the time, from the time he was little, even until the time of her, of her death. So, you, and I know for sure, I have chosen the right man, okay? If he, if he is taking care of your mother, or sorry, his mother and father very well, that is a sure indication that he will take care of you very well as well. So boys or young men, I want to tell you, if you haven't done this till now, start making that as a habit. If you take care of your parents, if you take care of your mother, your father well, that is a sure indication that you will take care of your wife as well. You'll be able to understand her as well, okay? And also now, I'm speaking to the adults who are here, okay? Whether your husband or your wife likes it or not, you are required to care for your parents as this is what the Lord wants you to do and he will bless you for it. Okay, that's what we need to. And I'm also, that is a way that we can show that we are honoring our parents. Now I'm gonna give you a few points or six points to say how you can understand your parents, okay? Six points to show how you can understand your parents. Point number one, ask your parents about their childhood. Has anybody done that? Ask your parents about their childhood. My little girl, when, we, uh, when, when I put her to sleep, she enjoys listening to our childhood stories. And that is fun for her and fun for me too. Yeah, so you were not there for your parents' childhood. And you might learn something specially interesting or very cool about your parents. So start talking, no, start asking them about their experiences and also ask your parents questions. A, a, a Dr. Neil Bjorgiegen, a clinical psychologist, he says, to understand your parents better, ask them what their lives were like when they were younger and their teenage years, their first job. So many things we take our parents for granted. We think they were always like this. Do you think that, that was the case? No, they were once upon a time child like you. They had so many dreams. They had so many wishes. They went through struggles. They had fun. So it's good to ask them about them. 
ask them questions like what was your childhood like how would your parents have described you when you were a teenager when you were in high school when you were in uh, like in nursery ask questions like that and also ask questions like what advice would you give to yourself when you were my age things like that you ask them and also what family tradition did you love the most so such questions ask them so that so that you can understand your parents a bit more better it also happens vice versa okay um, the next question ask their opinion have you any time tried that exploring your parents beliefs and opinion can actually give you an idea or their insight into their world if you are watching news together with your dad or mom ask them what is their opinion about certain things nothing wrong how huh? huh? that gives you an idea what your what your mom and dad are thinking about find out if something is going on with with your with a friend at school ask what they think about it and they can tell you what it is okay there's a, like and also i want to tell you one important thing one important thing when you're asking your parents do not have preconceived ideas about their opinions and judge them it happens vice versa i'm talking about parents to children as well when you say your opinions when you tell something do not judge them do not have preconceived ideas but for instead what you need to do be open minded to understand their views so for which you just don't stop asking their opinion you ask them why they think like that you understand what i mean why they think like that understanding why they take a certain stand actually will give you an uh, give you an understanding about your parents views and it happens vice versa as well okay for the for the parents and the children as well that's number 2 point number 3 share things with them okay even if this is small activities or small funny thing that has happened in the school or something like that share details with them i'm pretty sure they would love to hear that from you they might even start to share the same type of information in return then you will understand them better the more you communicate with your parents the more you will in time begin to understand them okay and you will never find out another another thing is don't ever assume that you can't share things with your parents because you as teenagers as young children you think they probably won't understand or they probably won't listen but you'll never find out their genuine reaction until you share it isn't it sometimes as 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 soon as you have your own preconceived ideas you might think that my my parents might be might really even throw me out if i say this thing but in fact that probably would not would never happen because unless and until you share with your parents you never know what their reaction is going to be just because of the past thing you probably have a preconceived idea about your parents and then if you don't as you unfortunately you're the one who's going to be the loser so share learn to share things with them number 4 ask for their help and advice your parents probably would love this yeah they would love to help with your problems maybe they can they, they, they would be happy to help from your relationship troubles to what you uh, to the, from from your relationship troubles to the what you're wearing and what you're wearing for your for for your christmas party or something you can they can help you out with all these things only thing is you need to ask for their help and advice okay but first you need to tell your parents that you want their advice from them and getting your parents perspectives on one of your problems will both help you for your protection and also will help you to understand your parents views much more better okay Now, number 5 point number 5 try to understand their stresses have you ever thought about that children do you think you only you have stresses your parents have more stresses than you they might have bigger problems than you that you than you think you do you probably but just might just just because you have food in the house just because you have a house roof there just because you get everything does not mean that we are not having stress we might be having a lot of stress there might be a lot of problems we are worried about trouble at work we might have worried about something we might have financial issues we might have so many other bigger things which you probably don't know just because you get everything does not mean that everything is provided we do try to make sure that our children get the best for us that's what we struggle and do things so you must try to understand their stresses too so that is very very important hearing about their problems will help you to understand your parents much much better number 6 at the last point here 
ask people who know your parents to talk about them. Like how you have uncles, aunts, you have grandparents, yeah? So who know your parents from the time they were little, so you can speak to them about them. So when you speak to them, you probably will know a bit more better about your parents. So these are the six points that I want to say to children today that you can actually uh, learn and understand about your parents. As I always mention, it applies both the sides as well. Is that clear? I hope children, you're all okay with these things. Now I'm going to move on to the adults, move on to the parents. Parents, how are you going to understand your children? Okay, I love this very much. Please listen to me very carefully. The advice that we rejected from our parents when we were younger are the ones that we are now giving to our children. Am I right? Am I right? We can do that. But the advice that we rejected from our parents when we were younger are the ones that we are giving to our children now. One other thing I want to say, once in a family, the children were screaming in their bedroom. The mother got so upset, so she went to the bedroom and she said, children, why are you screaming here? And do you know what the children said? The children said, mom, we are not screaming here. We are playing mom and dad. You understand what that, what that means? We are playing mom and dad here. So what does that show to you? So one of the best way to correct your children is to give a correct example or set a correct example for them in the family. Children, although they appear to be not listening, not watching, they are the most observing for people in the world. They observe every move that you do. They observe, listen to every talk that you talk, every way you react, everything is watched. Everything is watched by them. So what type of example are you setting in your family? This is a simple test. How is your language around your children? Not when visitors are there in your family, because you are very nice when the visitors are there in the family. But no one is there when you are alone with your family, with your children. What is your language around them? How is your behavior around them? Who is their role model? One teenager said, home is the best place to say anything that you want to because nobody there listens to me. You understand what I mean? Because nobody there is listening there. Is it really true in your own home? Is it really true in your own home? It is for you to think about it, reflect on it. And if it is true, it is time for you to change. Okay? Parents often understandably look to answers to solve the problems. But research shows that simply being curious about the meaning of your child's behavior helps them to regulate their big emotions, think flexibly, and manage social situations. While you may sometimes not understand the meaning of your child's behavior, simply wondering, simply wondering why your child is behaving that way rather than misinterpreting and jumping to conclusions can be very, very helpful. Parents play a very key role in a child's development, both physically and emotionally. You agree with me? It's so very important. I've got a few points for you as well. Write it down. Okay, the point number one, listen to your children. Do you really listen to your children? Sometimes you over talk them. I've done so many times. When my child starts saying something, I just don't listen to her. I just say, I just, I, the moment she says something, I, I probably guess that that's what she's going to say and then start over talking. I don't listen. I just start giving advice. So many parents have done that. As soon as they say, my, my children have told me that several times. They don't share things with me because what they said, they said, as soon as they start saying one or two things, I start giving them advice. Because of what? because I have misinterpreted what they're going to say. I have my preconceived ideas. So stop that first. That's very important because it took a long time for me to realize that. And it took a long time for me to overcome that as well. So it is important to listen to your children. Number two, understand your children. Okay, are you writing it down? Understand your children. Home is built on the foundation of wisdom and understanding. The proof that you are understanding them is that you are patient with them. 
yes you are patient with them one frustrated father said to the teenage son he said to the teenage son winston churchill when he was at your age he worked very hard he did full time job and he studied book at night he was so upset with the son and that's what he said the teenage son snapped back and he said yes and when he was at your age he was the prime minister of england so what does he say to say you know what you understand what he, what they tried to say so when they go wrong what you need to do is the proof that you are understanding is that we need to be patient with them as well last number 2 point number 3 is roots and wings two of the best things that we can give our children are roots and wings roots so that they are connected and founded and grounded to god's house that's important roots to christian heritage and take on on what you are doing today when they grow big so there is no price tag for it it may it may not say that it matters but it matters a lot when you take your child week after week saturday after saturday to church so it matters a lot that when you have morning and evening worship in your house you are actually shaping your children's life for their generation that is the root you are giving them the root there yeah so whatever happens you do them so giving them roots is very very essential because it shapes their generation and when you give them roots to stand and to stand firm and then <coughs> then let them dream what they want to dream let them fly and let them do amazing things so they will do amazing things when you start giving the true roots to them it might say that sometimes they might falter or they might waver and you have given them the base you have given them the roots one day definitely that will show it up that will come up that's important to so do whatever you need to do so that your roots are strongly uh, held in your children because they are the future generation that's important number 4 make them know that they are loved and accepted even when they fail make them know that they are loved and accepted even when they fail give your children some grace one teenager said that his mom is a travel agent for guilt trip when he goes wrong do you understand what i mean that teenager said his mom is a travel agent for guilt trip when he goes wrong what does she do she starts telling all that happened from the past you did this you did that you did. don't we do that we do that in our lives as well so i just want to tell you that is not the way to show that they are loud if they have done something wrong if they have failed make sure that they know that they are loud and accepted okay that is important number 5 parents admit if you are wrong if you are wrong please be humble enough to admit and say that you are sorry when you do that you are teaching a valuable lesson to your child as very very important for them number 6 keep your promises even if it is very difficult even if you can't do it so, so even if it's very difficult for you make sure that you keep your promises if you can't do it don't make a promise as very important number 7 point number 7 attention listen to them with your eyes with your ears give them full attention when they come to speak to you switch off your devices and give them the time so that they can actually talk with you that few minutes that five minutes or 10 minutes of complete attention is all that they ask for and that's all is important so give them the time number 8 the last point that point is very important discipline discipline is very very important god says he disciplines the people whom he loves so children if your parents discipline you it's because they love you if you do not discipline your children you do not love your children and children i need to say to you as i said to you before most of the time until you are 21 years old your brain is damaged your brain is not grown you see you think you are smart you think you are cool you think you know everything but actually you don't yeah you actually you don't because your brain is not completely developed you don't know that but you feel that you know everything that's a truth that's a medical that's a, that's a scientific truth 
So I want to tell you, your parents need to discipline you. <coughs> so if you have a parent, if you have parents who discipline you, you must appreciate them. You must understand that they're doing it because they love you. So, so many parents, so many parents tie up their dogs at night, but let their children loose. Some parents can trace the ancestral roots of, the, of, of them for the last 300 years. Unfortunately, they don't even know where the teenager went last night, or they don't even know what the, ch what the child is doing on the, on the internet. It's very sad. It is our job as parents to discipline them. We need to know what, where, and with whom they are going. If you refuse to discipline, then you don't love them. If your parents are disciplining children, it means that they love them. So don't prepare to lay down any rule that, they, that you're not prepared to enforce. It is very, very important for us to follow this discipline in our lives. These are the eight points that I would like to leave with, the, with parents. Finally, I want to say the three things that we need to give children, life, love, and laughter. So many parents need to chill out. So many people need to have fun. They have to have fun again in our family. And they need the three rules in our family. Be fair, be firm, be fun. That's very important. What is stopping us from doing all these things? I'm sure there's one thing, one important thing that is actually stopping us from interacting within ourselves, within ourselves in the family. And that is one thing that destroys our family is nothing but unresolved resentment. Is that right? There, is, there are unresolved resentment in our family. So what we need to do, we need to learn to forgive. One definition to forgive is to give up anger and the need to take revenge. If you still have anger within you, and if you still feel that you want to take revenge, then you have not forgiven at all. The first thing today that you need to do is forgive yourself, forgive your parents, forgive your children. And after that, with God's grace, kneel down, pray, pray together, and practice these points one by one. And with God's help, I'm pretty sure we will be able to establish a family which God actually wants in our lives. May God help us so that we can apply all these things in our lives and we will be an example family in this world. Thank you and God bless. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Our most gracious and loving and living Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for giving us the time to call upon your holy name. Thank you so much, Lord, for helping us to listen to this uh, points that about understanding parents and understanding children, Lord. There are so many things that I said today, which I really need your help so that we, I can follow it in our family, in our lives as well, Heavenly Father. I want to commit each and every member who's present here. I want to pray for their families too, Heavenly Father. Lord, we are sinners. We do have a lot of issues with ourselves. We have lots of unresolved resentments within ourselves. Lord, help us that we might forgive each other today and we'll be able to take this time, take this time so that we'll be able to spend the time to understand our children, understand our parents, so that there will be love in our house. Our house will be built upon knowledge, understanding and wisdom. We need you, we need your spirit so that we will build our families so that the future generation will be a stronger one. We want to invite you with, with it in, in our lives the rest of the time as well. Thank you once again for listening to our prayer. Dismiss us with your blessing. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.